I'm finally done building the earth, now it's time to go relax at my base. can't relax when my base looks like this! <sighs> well, I think I know what I'm gonna do for this video. I've always wanted to go all out on a storage system, and unfortunately I quit my last series before my storage room was fully realized. The storage system I'm going to build today is going to efficiently store and sort every single item in the game. And we're gonna make it look as good as possible. That's not all, because this is going to be my new base, and it's gonna have a ton of features that you're going to want to stick around to see. I'm going to be digging a giant hole and building a redstone contraption that's more complicated than anything I've ever made before. And of course, it's going to be decorated with a ton of detail. The very first step is to find a good place to make this thing. I'm out in the middle of nowhere because this is where I'm going to be building my base. Why did I choose this spot? Well... Oh yeah, there's lava. I should probably be holding this. Since you can't build an end portal, I'm going to build my base around the end portal. I'm actually heading right back to my base because I need to gather all the materials for a world eater. Not that kind of world eater, this kind. I'm gonna AFK here for a bit because I need a ton of slime blocks and also pistons, observers, sticky pistons, redstone blocks, glass, glazed terracotta, stone, cobblestone walls, dead coral fans, TNT, detector rails, redstone repeaters, obsidian, redstone, redstone lamps, trapdoors, note blocks, a redstone torch, and one button. Before I make the world eater, I have to make smaller world eaters to clear out a trench so the bigger world eater doesn't get stuck. I know it's confusing, but stick with me. After preparing the area, I set up the first flying machine, and we're ready to make the first trench. If you're wondering who that is, it's just a bot that'll keep the machine loaded while I'm not in the area. Alright, let's send off the flying machine to make trench number one, two, three, and four. And all the trenches are done. It wasn't exactly a smooth process. The flying machines broke several times on every single side of the trench. And there was a lot of lava and water cleanup as well. After that, I made the actual real deal world eater. And now that everything's ready, when I run this thing, everything within this perimeter is going to be destroyed, including this village. <laughs> All right, let's finally get this thing going in three, two, one. Let me tell you something about redstone. When a player gets far enough away from redstone, it stops working completely. To run a large redstone machine like this, I need to place bots so the entire thing is loaded at all times. At this moment, I realized that I forgot to spawn the bots. I started panicking. I cranked up the simulation distance, I tried flying along as close as I could, but these TNT bombers got all scrambled and this chunk exploded. <laughs> I got some materials to fix everything, nothing too hard, just annoying. I fixed up every part that needed fixing, and now I'm ready to run this thing for real, for real this time. Don't worry, I didn't forget the bots. Alright, no countdown this time, let's just, uh, boop. And... looks like it's- oh, oh my gosh, I forgot- <gasps> Nah, it's working. I'm gonna wait in this little glass container and just let it run. You get to see the satisfying part. What you don't see is the many, many times that it broke. The bigger and more complex a redstone machine is, the more easy it is to break. And something as small as a waterlogged slab can break this farm. Non-explodable blocks like waterlogged blocks and obsidian is pretty normal, but sometimes the fluid sweepers would not always return right and could mess up the entire thing. I don't want to talk any more about it, but if you've made a perimeter like this, then you know my pain. Speaking of pain, that was all I felt when I saw that only 2.7% of people are actually subscribed. The time lapse is over, but as you can see, we're not quite done. The reason why I've stopped here is because the world eater is completely broken.
There's also this portal that I have to consider, which has been the crux of most of my problems. The next World Eater design I'm gonna go with is this. You might recognize it, it's the same one I used for the last perimeter I made. It's a lot less laggier, a lot more simple, and way cheaper, but it doesn't clear liquids. See, what I didn't show is the several hours of me clearing out the biggest lava pools within the perimeter. Not only that, I still had to be active while the TNT bombers were running because of all the water and lava that was left in the perimeter that I hadn't cleared out before. I wouldn't have had to do this if I had just kept the first design that I was using. And again, the reason I'm not doing that is because of the portal. I've linked some good world eater designs in the description if you would want to do this in your own world. I usually play with a 13 chunk render distance, and standing in the middle of the perimeter, I can't see a thing. Well, that's the giant hole now done. Oh, I went the wrong way. I'll just leave this redstone stuff here until I need the resources. I know some people will be curious to see all of this. Yep, over a double chest full of diamond ore, and then all of this stuff too. I know some people got mad at me for throwing out totems in an earlier video, but look at me now. This is the list of every single item that I'm going to need to build this storage system. You can see we've got a lot of blocks, a lot of redstone components, some decoration stuff, and also one of every single item in the game. I spent a couple hours on stream gathering two of everything. Oh, and also this happened. Uh, 1.20 stuff? Oh my gosh! Ugh. Most of the stuff I had lying around in the numerous amount of chests that I have all over my world, but I also had to go out and get some extra stuff that's more rare. I made a warden switch to explore the ancient cities. I respawned the ender dragon to get dragon breath, which no one uses ever. I mined some ancient debris, and I had to mess around with charged creepers to get all of the mob heads. I only need one of each item to construct the storage system, but you'll see why I got two of everything later. Apparently you like the material montages, so here we go for the second one of the video. All the stuff I had to get wasn't particularly hard, it was just a lot of stuff that took a while. I needed over a shulker of both repeaters and comparators, and those take a ton of redstone, and I also needed to make droppers, dispensers, redstone blocks. I'm glad I made this redstone farm a couple videos ago. Having to gather a few of these resources by hand gave me a few ideas for some farms that I might want to make in future videos. Now that I have everything I need to build, let's move everything to the giant hole I made earlier. Okay, I think we're all set. This is the storage design that I'm going to be building. This is on the SciCraft Blitz world, and it was created by the combined efforts of all these people, but that was done in 1.17, and also it's not really my style, so I gave it a few upgrades. I started off by building a beacon with every effect, to make building a lot easier, and then I started building the storage system one layer at a time starting at the bottom. I'm using Lightmatica, if you've watched any of my videos or other YouTubers like me, you'll know what Lightmatica is. It basically shows a blueprint of whatever I'm trying to build, so I know where to place each block. It doesn't actually give me the items. Alright, the bottom section is done, but unfortunately I'm not even halfway done because I still have to do all of this. Now that I've got the shape of the item halls down, I'm gonna grab my boxes of every item, and now I have to fill in each of the item displays. This part was pretty satisfying to get all of these blocks down, but I spent most of my time looking through boxes and trying to find where each item went. After that, I set up the filters with some renamed items and the block that corresponded with each slot. This is why I got two of everything earlier. I had to kind of repeat this part a lot. Couple layers of building, then some item sorting, couple more layers of building, more sorting. And eventually I was done with the sorting system. 
This whole thing is fully functional, well, should be fully functional now. All that's left is to build the chunk loader above. This chunk loader will make it so that the sorting system can run no matter where I am in the world. Since it involves nether portals, I had to make another side as well. Alright, it's pretty much done. This is what the inside looks like, and I know there are some spots that don't look quite right. We're not done with all the details, we'll get to that later. Right now, I want to talk about this portal. If I go through here, huh? I end up here. I usually like having my portals on the nether roof, but I can't because I have these here, and these are for the chunk loader. I think making a nether hub is a project I should take on in the future, but for now, I'm gonna go through here, through here, and I'm gonna break a hole through the bedrock so I can fly around easier. First layer done. This is getting pretty messy and I'll have to go get some more TNT. I found this method to work the best. And there we go, I think this is good enough. Now I've got to dig a hole all the way down to the level where the portal is at. And there we go, now when I want to get straight to my base, I can go down here and through the portal. Okay, where do I even start with this thing? We don't have all day, so I'm just gonna rapid fire through all of the features. Two halls of the main storage, the bulk storage hall, item input, unsorted items, a light that turns on when the system is running, unstackable storage, sorting for items with variants like copper, coral, armor trims. This is where I planned for the end portal to go. Obviously it's not actually there, so we'll have to change that later. Anvil chipper, don't laugh, it's a very important feature. Super smelter, the portal as you've seen. This room which has shulker box storage, more shulker box storage, quick access to useful items, some helpful workstations, and a little jukebox section. And of course, the whole thing is decorated to be in the style of my skin. Before I forget, I have to get rid of these items that are renamed because if these find their way into the item sorter, they could really mess up the filters and who knows what could go wrong. So to make sure these items stay banished, I built Mount Doom in my- Nah, I just threw them out. I can't delay it anymore. It's time to actually do some sorting. It's the next day and good news, everything got sorted. I guess you can't really tell by looking, but mostly all of my materials from various chests all over the world have now been transported to these chests. There was a bit of an incident with TNT because there was a dispenser place where a dropper should have been, but it's all fixed now. There was also a pretty weird glitch. As pistons were pulling down cauldrons and pushing them up, there were these ghost cauldron blocks that were being generated that I couldn't actually break. I added a bunch of blocks that I have a lot of to the bulk storage. You'll probably see this expand or change in the upcoming videos as I get more stuff. I've already spent so many hours working on this base, but I still can't say that it's completely done. I've got a list of some smaller scale changes that I want to make that I'm just going to go through right now. Let's start off by fixing the zombie pigment trap. Let's activate this portal, get rid of the frames with mushrooms, and rebuild the room around it. I couldn't have the portal in the place that I had planned for it to be because of chunk aligning. I had some extra space left over, so I put some flags on the wall, which is a reference to the world map that I made in the last video, and these are the top four countries of where my subscribers are from. If you want your country to be on here or stay on here, Subscribe. To finish up in this area, I got rid of the temporary platform that I had set up. I didn't realize what I labeled the bulk output was actually the bulk input, so I changed that. I readjusted some of the item frames to face the right way. I patched this temporary hole in the roof. I readjusted the order of the colored and wood blocks. That also meant I had to change the filters too. I put designs on each of the banners. I put some fuel in the super smelter. 
I made a farm for music discs and I collected all of them. I laid down some powdered snow in the nether so I don't take fall damage even if I dive straight down. I lit up this part of the shulker unloader and I stocked up this section with the items that I use the most. If a box ever runs out, it'll restock itself. I finally added some armor trims to my armor. I upgraded the rest of my diamond tools to netherite, and I was going to rename all of my armor and tools and equipment, but I don't really know. So let me know in the comments what are some good names for all this stuff. Armor, tools, I don't know, give me a good fishing rod name. That's everything that I wanted to do, and now I'm ready for the next project. But I'm kind of on a roll, so... I'm gonna see how many of these achievements I can get done. I've never paid any attention to these, so there are a few that are super simple. I went through all the achievements which are pretty easy and don't take a lot of time, but I didn't finish all of them. Maybe I'll do a live stream where I complete the rest. I should probably address how ugly the outside of this build is. For those paying attention, this video has taken over three months to make, but that's not entirely true because I've also been working on a fix for this. In 2024, I'm going to attempt to make one of the coolest bases ever, and I can't wait for you to see it. That's all for now.